I'm excited to welcome you to some new Professional StarCraft 2. It is week one of the Korean StarCraft League, a community-backed tournament for showcasing and supporting the StarCraft 2 scene organized by Community Titans. Chicken Man and Dave Testa. Find out more info and how to support in the description below. No, this is not sponsored except by me loving good games for the fans. And you know who's almost guaranteed to give you good games? The man who is currently running desperately away from the very first probe. It is the last mech, Terran. It's Gumiho. Up against the most emotional player. In StarCraft 2, he wears his heart on his sleeve and across his entire body. You can see it in his face when he plays, and he plays so well. It is creator. So, I hope you guys, if you enjoy good games for the fans, even before you like and subscribe, or maybe, maybe right after, you go to the description and check out the Korean Star League. Uh, it is on top, and in addition to GSL and ESL and all these other Star Leagues, but I think there's always more room for good games in StarCraft 2. So I love to see the initiative. I support it myself, uh, especially to get these replays for you guys. If there's any players you explicitly want to see, let me know. But I want to see where this game goes. We're starting out Reaper Wall. Gumio checking it thrice in order to make sure uh, he can, well, creators playing naughty or nice. Hmm. Um, nice is not here right now. He's not in the Korean Star League. He's a Taiwanese player, but Stargate is the choice. We've been seeing plenty of it lately, and I am not the least bit surprised as is probably the most consistent opener overall. Uh, though while Phoenixes have been popular lately, the Oracle will always have a place. Oh, creator. Not dealing with this. Just slaps down the pile on the block. Was this a two Reaper opener? No. Reaper just everywhere. No, it was. It was. One of them died, though. So we just scrubbed it from history because it failed. Oh, wow. High ground. I actually broke the lock there for a moment, but the Cyclone going to be able to take out the Adept on the other side. So Gumiho started with the double gas heavy tech opener. And by heavy tech, I mean getting the factory before the expansion, so or, or near the expansion, so that way you have a built-in response to that early Protoss pressure. And, uh, yeah, of course, why not? Cloak Banshees against Protoss, who's going Stargate. He doesn't know he's going Stargate, but this is... It's, uh, it can be... In, this could be very bad for Gumeo. As the Oracle plus the Phoenixes are about as hard a counter as you get. The Oracle can detect the Banshee, uh, and the Phoenixes can take it down. It can't even fight back or run away, so... Of course, it's one of those odd scenarios where uh, it isn't necessarily... None of these units are necessarily going to be in the right spot at the right time. If the Phoenixes and or Oracle are across the map and the Banshees come in, you could end up losing 15 probes, despite having on paper everything you need to deal with it. <sighs> All right. So the first three Stargate units on the way across. Cyclone just hanging out here. I don't think the Cyclone a real threat with this many. You could easily pick up and break the lock or just outrange it. Reaper gets in, and in many forms, he's spotted the Stargate. Gonna get in, slaps down the Revelation, scan to chase, and from downtown, knocks down a Phoenix, but very, very thankfully for Creator. He does not get the Oracle. So the Oracle gonna be the most important part of this for the near future. Yeah, sure, you can have observers, but nothing is more reliable than slapping Revelation on a unit. Uh, which essentially guarantees you can keep track of it for at least the near future. Behind this. Wow, he's building it at the third. Gumi Ho, you greedy goose. Sure, we'll go with that. I <laughs> Building it at the third while he comes across with two clones, a siege tank, and a smattering of marines. I think... How many marines are with this? About 14. Um, 14 Marines with no upgrades whatsoever. One of them in stasis. How many units does Creator have? He gets one of the Banshees. Another one's going to be coming in towards the main, but there's a shield battery, which is one of the built-in counters to this. The Nexus is under fire. Down goes the Pylon. 
And here comes the army, though. Quite a mixed bag of Protoss as he picks up the siege tank, negates a lot of the damage, the Immortal will blast it away. A few of the Phoenixes will go down, as will the Oracle. But, uh oh the Banshee found the natural where there is, well, there is a shield battery, actually. You should be able to deal with this. And another round of units trying to drag the siege tank fire into the stalker, but Gumiho retargets. Gonna be able to take out one or two more. Already a hectic start here. Down goes the Banshee. And now the counter damage coming across the map. About even losses so far. And the fact that Gumiho has this third base is very important. But right now, Creator, with just three gateways, has been able to put enough defense together. Not even able to complete the orbital command. Very important for Gumiho to keep this alive. And that siege tank should be able to zone out enough of the ground army. But overall, it would have been very nice for Gumiho to be able to keep that alive. Especially since he's dealing with a no splash damage Protoss army. It's not particularly intimidating, but just the brute force is able to shove its way in here and uh, continue to keep Gumiho busy as he loses several supply depots. An observer in turn. There's already a Colossus on the way, but both these players willing to to duke it out with essentially with what boils down to early game units. Sometimes we'll see players sit back, eye each other, and, and decide on a longer-term fight. But no, not here. Not in the Korean StarCraft League. Check the script. Uh, but instead, continued damage already. Nine to four workers lost. A little bit of everything has gone down. But Gumiho, I think, as time goes on, the longer the Phoenixes are out and gaining value, the worse it gets, as there's no real, like building turrets is all well and good, but you invested in the turret, <clears throat> and the turret doesn't chase down the phoenixes and kill them. Just a deterrent, which there's a pun there, I'm sure, but uh, uh, a little bit too low brow for the high flying phoenixes. Stim already completed combat shield. We're looking at, he actually canceled concussive shells. I'm sorry, was it not in the budget? I guess, as Gumio is actually very light on the cap. Does he have any marauders? He does not, though continuing siege tank production. Well, I do enjoy that. It's going to be Phoenix Colossus. He's getting plus one ground, extended thermal lands, plus one air weapons and charge as well as a Templar Archive. So Creator just filling in much of the rest of the tech tree right now. Whereas Gumiho is building up into a Marine Tank Army. And I feel no reason to expand on that point because he hasn't either. It's essentially just Marines and Tanks. He has, okay, Medivacs. If we're going to be pedantic. But four Medivacs, three Siege Tanks, and 41 Marines. So... On paper, well, it's hard to tell on paper. This is clearly an it depends sort of army. The Colossi can melt those Marines. They can just be boiled down into their base atoms with those extended thermal lenses. But at the same time, if the tanks are sieged up, they can smash the Colossi before they even get those swipes off. Of course, the Phoenixes add an extra wrinkle to this as well, picking up the siege tanks, picking off the medevacs, or just dying to the marines. Oh, the army. Very tense now. Both sides, I think, have an idea of what the other one's going for. I think Gumiho making a right choice here and deciding to split off a medevac, though Creator smartly has spotters in position, just a single pro, but enough to discourage Gumiho from sending his units right to the fourth base. The worker counts are relatively low, as both of them have been focused very much on economy. And 60-ish workers means you still have a solid economy, but you can't afford to lose many workers. And uh, you can't tech up particularly quickly while building. So they're very focused on the army buildup right now. Gumiho, gonna pick off a zealot. Creator realizing, oh, well, maybe gonna try to seize this opportunity, but he's going into a siege line. The Archons literally can't get through here. The Orbital Command building in the midst of the fight acting as quite a choke point. And in fact, it looks like Creator going to try to pick it off, but the Phoenix is still doing some damage to it. Picks off... No, nope, doesn't pick off a Siege Tech. Creator trying to fit a square peg in a non-existent hole here, it feels like. And that is just ill-advised. 
siege tanks, pretty good at their jobs, which is smashing things from afar in an entrenched position. Creator tries a couple times to see test the waters there, but finds them a little rough for his taste. And now 2-2 is done. Gumiho was in a bit of an awkward position as he went into his third, but now I think if he can bring his army to bear, has a superior force. As the upgrades combined with the siege tank count, of course, it's a very brittle army. If those siege tanks are not sieged up in the right spot, he can easily get smashed in a single strike. The siege tanks won't be able to participate well enough in the fight before the charge lots close the distance. And now Gumiho is a bit balled up on the other side of his orbital command. Creator just trying to outmaneuver him. Plus one siege tank weapons about to complete. And that is a big damage contributor. At the same time, though, behind a creator, he's got uh, Storm plus two. Oh, more units smacking down. Siege tanks from afar. Adding some damage, and Ghost being added in here, too. Ghost, in general, great against Protoss, but especially against this mass Phoenix and Archon sort of style. I mean, there's no bad time for Ghost against Protoss. Every unit has shields. Many of them have energy. Uh, there's nothing that EMP is going to... Essentially, just hitting two or three units with EMP has already justified the existence of the Ghost, and usually it doesn't stop there. But... What a game to kick things off. Clearly, both these players wanted to get damage done early, and neither was able to pull it off. Creator with a few ill-fated attacks, but still waiting for his opportunity, whereas Gumiho has relegated himself to the back line. But here comes... If, if Creator's gonna walk right into your siege tanks, why not let him? He keeps trying it here. But there's an attack from the right flank. Oh, I thought Creator might try to use that as an opportunity to jump in. Oh, the tanks. EMP, though, gets some of the energy on the Phoenixes, but the storms! Devastating! Right on those siege tanks. Quite a choke point. It works against Gumio this time around, but Creator smacked back. Still, the siege tanks adding too much damage. A whole lot here, yeah. Overall, the damage dealt. Gumiho, I'm not sure how we're counting EMP in that. But, yeah, more EMPs. Gumio's now got the ghost count. Creator's going to have to rethink this. He goes for the double Ds of destruction. We got the disruptors. We got the dark shrine. We got, we got a fleet beacon, warp prism speed, and blink. As Creator essentially says, well, this isn't working. Let me go ahead and get um, everything else. <laughs> How many stargates? We're sitting on one Stargate, adding a second. Gumio sends out four Metavacs, which is a bold move, considering he, he only when he has all his forces together is he really able to compete with Gumiho's combined uh, army here. It could work out. A very beyond ass, just slapping a few ghosts. He just balled it up, put the ghosts in. I completely love that, as adding those ghosts into any army is just, it's a special sauce. Okay. If, if you don't have the ghost, it's like a pizza without cheese. You're missing something. Uh, something that is considered pretty important when you're putting together a pizza or against Protoss. We got a carrier and a disruptor in production as creator kind of reaches for whatever he can get to deal with the army. Because at some point, the Terran army with enough ghosts and, and long range damage, sometimes you'll see players opt for the Liberators. In fact, Gumiho with a fleet beacon and three starports on the way, I think, is is considering that. And sometimes you'll see the siege tanks. I love watching the siege tanks, but the liberators are more reliable as time goes on. And of course, have some sort of anti-air capability, as well as uh, the ability to harass mineral lines and stuff like that. So while siege tanks might be good enough to open up, usually we do see that liberator transition. And that is what we got here today. Hisek Auto Tracking joining the production tab alongside plus three infantry armor. Gumiho's already completed his plus three infantry attack. Three more commands. What? Coop, no. 
No. He's getting Yamato Cannon. He doesn't have the supply for Battle Cruisers, but could it be? Battle Cruisers. Gumiho, no. Don't tempt me like this. Don't do this to me. I can't handle this in my life right now. He d He builds a battle cruiser! I don't know, but I love it. Even if he loses the game, I'm fully happy to look. Gumiho, get it frees up some supply by getting blasted with a rupter. I I three it's yes, he's doing it. It's happening. It's he's doing it. It's ha it's happening. I can't believe it. Okay, so the reason you usually don't go battle cruisers as opposed to liberators is very simply the same things the battle cruisers counter. Well, uh, the battle cruisers are countered by Tempest, Void Race. Oh my god. They're quite good against carriers as they have all that armor but if the battle cruisers are scouted and and i think creator is getting a little bit antsy here yamato cannon is done if you can get five six this is a jump in and win the game sort of situation this is not a increment out battle cruisers because the longer the battle cruisers are on the field they are a bit like carriers in that. The longer they're on the field, is he actually going to go? I mean, I guess three battle cruisers are more than enough to deal with uh, the phoenixes. The phoenixes do have plus two, but they're going to be spotted. I think he noticed. Will he fire the cannons? Yes, lines up a volley from downtown. Three phoenixes caught. Immediate tempest production. But it looks like we're gonna get that classic battle cruiser versus tempest recall versus uh tactical jump oh my well now just throwing away ground units a battle cruiser is just fighting they like the even with superior to, uh, weapon upgrades, the the phoenixes are barely scratching the paint on that battle cruiser. Yeah, well, the ba the batteries run out of energy almost immediately. Oh my! <laughs> the disruptor is still zoning here. One battle cruiser took some damage. That's a very dead ghost. But here come the siege tanks. Oh, okay, he shot. The, the disruptor was taken out at that last moment. And the bio army is still fearsome enough. Now, here's the thing. Is Tempest... Oh, did he jump? He jumped back home to the shipyards here. If he... It, too many Tempests are easily countered by Vikings, by Marines even. So, if he, he leans too heavily into the Tempest, at the same time, they're not a perfect counter against battle cruisers because the Amato Cannon really changes the equation. Right now, Gumio has so much money. He's got all these bases. He's got half a dozen orbitals. I, I take it back. He has eight orbitals. The Tempests are on the field. Another disruptor shot. Splits the Marauders. Where are the battle cruisers in this fight? They're on the back line. More of the bio gets blasted away by the Ruptors. Tempest, they have their tectonic destabilizers. Their bonus versus building is not going to be particularly relevant right now, but sieging, out, out sieging the siege tanks, as of course the tanks cannot shoot up. It looks like Gumiho kind of forced off his own bases here. He's expanded to the southern side. We may end up in an incredibly awkward base trade. Another, uh, well, here comes the bio army. The disruptor threads the needle through the orbital commands. A whole wide array of interceptors here. The disruptors looking for an opportunity stems forward. The disruptors don't find that connection. The battle cruisers 
are sliding over to the other side. Gumiho not fighting head on right now, but he's running out of space before creators directly onto his production. Gumiho not feeling confident enough to fight as the Tempest continue to chew their way through. Oh my god, that Tempest attack is so loud. One of the loudest attacks in the game. Fun fact. Continue shelling, another goes down. The battle cruisers are going to work. Thing is, Creator doesn't have enough units on the other side of the map to fight the battle cruisers. Oh my. Okay, well. More Tempest in production. This Ruptor smacks in. A huge chunk of Marine Marauder is taken out. The Battle Cruisers jump home! And the Yamato Volley is online. He doesn't recall out. He's gonna try to stem. The Battle Cruisers are chasing down the army. Is it enough? Though Ellie recalls, but he's already taken so much damage. Gumiho, what a play! He finally tactically dunks on the army. Creator thought he could fight, but that's where he dies. What a play by Gumiho! He pulls the battle cruisers out and he uses them so well. Creator overestimated or un he underestimated the power of the battle cruisers. They have plus two, plus one. They have the armor at least. So pretty much everything but the Tempest struggling to get damage because it already has a couple base armor. More EMPs coming out. But what a play by Gumiho! And now, still has enough command centers to expand. Creator, the income. He finally evened it up a bit with all that damage he was doing. And it's not over yet, as Creator's army is dead even with Gumihos. 134 to 134. That epic play was great, but at the same time, the Battlecruisers need to jump a single volley from these Tempests. He jumps! And he's out of there. Just barely. He knew that revelation was on him. Now, is Creator's army going to be enough? He's got two Ruptors. There were some High Templar in that last fight. There are no longer. It's a smattering, but the Viking count. The Vikings getting rapid reignition thrusters. And here's the issue. The Vikings are able to take down the carriers. He gets the War Prism, a costly engagement for Gumiho. But at the same time, he sniped off all those key units from Creator. And Gumiho is maxed out. He still has the battle, three battle cruisers. I love the battle cruisers as a timing attack. What a, what a crazy game. Hmm. That was, I don't know. I, I don't think we can call this game of the, maybe, maybe, I dare say. That was one of my favorite plays this whole year. I mean, I'm a sucker for battle cruisers, much like everyone else from the Bronze League all the way up, but the most actually effective usage of battle cruisers against Protoss I've seen in a long time. It's not over yet. Creator has still been sitting on a very competent army. There's still the chance the fight goes horribly wrong for Gumiho, and Creator's able to carry that momentum all the way through. Battle cruisers kill the base. Gumiho is. What, what am I watching here? Blink stalkers get behind. The battle crew <laughs> seems like a bit of a disproportionate response. Battle cruisers will murder this. The Tempest sent out. Oh my god, this Nexus has 9 HP. How did this happen? The Tempest? He'll jump away. Behind the army which there should be enough to deal with this. Fires the Yamatas. Last two disruptors away. The last battle cruiser will go down, but the Vikings finding the fight. The Tempest are on the other side of the map. He doesn't, oh, he has full energy here. He could recall into this fight. There's only that one Ruptor, and that one Ruptor is a huge deal. Kubio was right to target them. Will Creator hold? Oh my. The EMPs, though, coming through. He only has the one. The Disruptor's still on cooldown. EMPs across the board. A new Ruptor, but it's taken out before it can fire. And the Terran army 
just ripping through everything. It's all gone. The Tempests are nowhere to be seen. They're going to show up far late to the party and all their friends are already dead. Tries to recall some probes out. Get out of here. And not in a good way. In a dead way. The Tempests are chased away too. And the Marauders, just far too much. It looks like that'll... That's it. That's it. Gumi has died. Oh my god, another disruptor hit for the road. But what a game from Gumi Ho! Oh, the battle cruisers. I'm going back to it. All right, creator. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know why creator didn't leave the game. Um. I'm going back to that fight though. Uh, I know there are more games in the series, but I need to see it again. Yeah, like, that. Uh, I mean, maybe this game goes on 15 more minutes and Gumiho... Well, Gumi... No, he has 17 Marines. That should be enough. On top of the two battle cruisers. Now, this is happening. I'm glad we got this moment. Yeah, here come the Marines. Creators fighting for... I, I do love... I would love to see Creator's face at, like, you know, any point in the series. But specifically, the moment we're about to be relive here. I think uh, Creator may be overestimating his position a bit. The Tempest one-shotting SCVs. Oh my, he's at 11 supply. GG! Here we are. Gumiho doing damage on the other side, pushed back. Let's look at it from creator's perspective. Firing the Ruptor. Here comes Gumi. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Who called in the fleet? Oh, but he gets that. Those storms are beautiful. But they just weren't enough. What a play. Oh, Gumi Ho. Well. I don't know how we're going to top that, but this is the Korean StarCraft League, so I think there's a chance as we go into the next game. Ah, <sighs> Gumiho. Again. Dragon Scales. <sighs> Game two. Gomiho puts a point on the board. Jimmy. Gotta calm down. I don't know how we top that, but so what is the answer to the battle cruisers? A lot of the time, well, it is kind of hard to tell because it really depends on, on how they're using them. Creator, I think, needed, I don't know, Void Race? From uh, is anything you use to try to counter directly the battle cruisers is relatively easily countered by the rest of the Terran army. Like, Tempest and Void Rays are quite direct um, in their ability to deal with battle cruisers, but they die quite easily to marines, ghosts, vikings, whereas the carriers, uh, which are better against those options, um, don't do much. They barely scratch the battle cruisers because the interceptors don't have particularly high damage per attack, 
um, they just have a lot of attacks that the battle cruisers can kind of shrug off. So, in many ways, the battle cruisers can be a great counter, but usually we see players go for the Vikings and the Liberators because battle cruisers are also incredibly expensive, which means if on paper they're a good counter, for every one you lose, you've lost more than a command center of resources. So, uh, I think the situation which Gumio went for it made a lot of sense as he waited essentially until he had that sort of income. He had that bank. So he could use them as this big, uh, essentially buying out creator from the game because he could afford to lose those resources. Even if it went horribly wrong, he hadn't necessarily lost. Uh, whereas creator had to find a way to deal with them. I love it. I love it. I think it was clear. I like to think uh, it's clear. So like and subscribe. Check out the KSL. Uh, description. I think uh, we'll have a comment if Jimmy's on the ball. <sighs> that was the... Uh, very occasionally you see battle cruisers against Protoss, but usually it is like 20 of them, not like 6 or 7. Rarely is tactical jump used so tactically. <laughs> Did the first Reaper die? Fortunately, though, it just walked past the... Okay, creator... I'm going to go ahead and question a little bit of the strategery here, which is he went for the Reaper wall and then, well, I guess he put the Stargate at the front where it's less likely to be scouted because the Reaper could just jump up and see it, but it is going to be a mind drop. Oh, no. We don't... Oh, oh. I thought he got away too. Cre clearly, Creator thought so. He did not see that mine. I didn't see that. Mine. That it's so. It's very difficult because you essentially have to be staring at your oracle, or whatever unit, literally every second. Because if you miss even a split second, you will die to the mines. And even if you're staring at it, there's a chance because of how easy it is to wander in. So Gumiho gets the Oracle and with it, a great start. He's just got these mines out here. Oh my god, gonna burrow another one? Oh no! It did, it, he's sacrificing probes on the map. And now, okay, he's gonna do the thing. Check it out. I think he got it. Yeah, nailed it. Perfect timing. Now he's going to try the other one. Yep. Here you go. You know. Using the shade to draw out the projectile. Oh, I missed that one. Ooh, too early. Very thin margin. Here's a pro tip. Um, we have damaged health bars on, so you can't quite see it. But if you have the health bar segments, um, once you have one bar left, it kind of depends a little on your screen resolution. But with one bar left on the segment and the shade timing, if that's when you walk into range, it's usually right about the time it takes for the Widow Mine to trigger, but then your shade dodges the hit. So, then again, if you're high enough level to understand what I'm saying, you probably don't need, need me to say it. It is, uh, as you can see, not reliable, even if you are literally one of the best pro players. Creator, I think, ranked third, maybe fourth. As Protoss right now. Uh, Hero, Max Packs. It's not a deep bench for Protoss players. <laughs> Classic and Creator are, are um, up there, but definitely not at the same level of Hero and Max Packs at the moment. Stats has to be factored back in. Very excited for that. I'm sure stats will show us how to deal with Widowmine Drop. All right, we've been doing it all wrong. I hope. Gumiho is sending... That's a lot of stuff. I thought there might be SCVs with how much was coming across the map. No, it's just a big bio army. The triple threat on the way. Stim combat shield and plus one. This is the peak timing of early mid-game Terran. When you bring all those upgrades to bear. And the Terran army has reached peak strength. 
Oh my god, interference matrix. Stim is done, plus one. The force fields mildly inconvenience Gumiho. Oh wait, no, Stim isn't done. That's why he didn't pop it. And then he loses. Okay, this is actually like an anti-timing now. If he had popped that interference matrix slightly later and had Stim done, I think he just jumps the Colossus and kills it. But instead... Instead, it finishes like two seconds after he needed it. And Gumiho walks right into two Colossi and shield batteries. Yeah, that's quite a thin margin. And thankfully for him, he didn't lose his entire army, but he very well could have. Well, double drop heading out. Great spotter pylon from Creator. He's going to have knowledge of everything going down here. Ghost Academy is on the way for Gumiho. Picks up one that you think he's gonna get the Nexus here. Yeah. Gets the Nexus. Stims away. There's the Devil Drop on the other side. He picks up again. Creator's still sitting on three bases, of course, because Gumiho just took out his fourth. Well, I, Creator, what is he going for? We got five pylons on, oh wow, he is supply blocked. Between losing the spotter pylon or two, as well as that fourth nexus, he finds himself unable to build more units, which could be a bit concerning, as Gumio currently up nearly 30 army supply. One thing is Creator hasn't done any sort of counter damage. He doesn't have a war prism. His phoenixes haven't been able to come across the map. I drop in the main. Shield battery overcharge. But he can just kill the shield battery, which solves most of that problem. And Gumiho. Looking quite good here. He's got the one, two, three, but the widow mines will burrow. Does he have an armory? He does. So that means they will require detection even after firing. I will say, it looked like Gumiho may be able to do critical damage. But instead, every one of these attacks was shut down and knocked out. And in fact, Gumio ends up losing a huge amount of his army. Uh, and the supply gap closes dramatically. As Gumio is now even on army supply. It was a good idea. The execution could have used a, maybe a bit of work. Disruptors on the way. I am loving the series, though. I think these two are quite evenly matched. Uh, and that makes for great games, especially if they're not... Like, like everybody loves watching Cyril and Maru and... and uh, I would say Hero, but Hero is a little shaky sometimes. But it's these kind of games where both players are incredibly good. They're willing to make very risky and dramatic plays. But they don't work out 100%. Maybe they work out two-thirds of the time. And it's that other third of the time that, that balances it out between them. It makes the most interesting games, in my opinion. Yes, technically, if they played perfect, then X or Y would win, but good thing we have Z, because then Zerg can win every time. This message brought to you by the Terran Conglomerate. I have any, I even wanted to do a bit, like, I wanted to do some time fill about the Korean StarCraft League and and supporting it and all that besides just the beginning and the end but these games have been so dramatic i haven't really found the space for it so uh but with that said once again make sure to check it out with the description it's going on every week the higher the support on patreon and Matarino, the more the prize pool and the more likely more korean players we got maru and be well i i would say beyond but beyond would probably show up for like a slice of two-day-old pizza and and uh an iou for four bucks um, that's uh, essentially his standard for participating in tournaments <laughs> not to belittle but two two finishing up for gumiho fusion core you know what
Fusion! Gar. Now, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I don't want to jinx it here. It is a very similar scenario, but Gumiho's still doing great damage with the bio army right now. Finding plenty of success. And this is just about half his army. The other half is headed towards the right side here. Dodges the Ruptors. Yeah, some of the Blink Stalkers are going to chase. Gets a few extra Marauders, but guess what? The rest of the army's over here. Recalls into it, but is that really what you want? Going to land it. Wow, the recall all the way over to the right side. Disruptor shot clips some Marauders. But it looks like Gumiho is winning on both fronts as the rest of the army scrambles in. He's winning this, and then the Marauders are beating the Stalkers on the left. Another Disruptor shot a hectic battle, but he's going to get the next side on both sides. Gumi Ho! Yeah, loses a lot on the way out. And the, the Vikings have to go the other direction. It looks like the small bio army, but Creator! Unable to muster the forces on either side and ends up taking critical damage. Mm -mm. Alright, this is a bit of a desperation counterattack. Now the disruptors could do a deadly amount. Are there there's some DTs in there as well? He can't even figure out what to hit, but the army on the other side comes back. Gumio dipping in supply. He actually wasn't building that many units for a bit here. The losing a lot of the medevacs. The SCVs pulled the boys on the front lines. He just needs to win this fight. Juggling his Robobay units has a disruptor shot. Big connection on the DTs. EMP, though, loses the Colossus. DTs go to work. Warp Prism. Warping in. Oh. I, well, actually, Creator may have enough to turn this around. I was really not expecting. I thought Gumio would easily have enough, but... Instead, Creator shoving his way into the natural. He has an Archon. He has a whole lot of Zealots. He can warp in. His 3-3 three is about to finish for Gumiho. If he can get the Warp Prism, that's the key to everything here. Uh, the more of the boys are pulled. More of the boys try to drag the damage in. He needs to target the Prism. He's going gets the Prism. That's the reinforcements. And just like that, it looks like Gumiho is going to collapse on the army. There's not that much back. It'll be lost 39 SCVs, though. And now Creator's gonna be in the same scenario without enough army and too many workers. Creator bit off more than he could chew, though it wasn't clear as they were busy digesting each other's armies in the middle of the map. Well, not really middle of the map, in Gumiho's base. What a hectic game. What a great series. The Medivac, he's got nine Medivacs and only 13 bio units. <laughs> Which really tells you the story of the game, which is everyone's getting punched in the face and uh, the rest of the units look on and wonder what the hell's going on down there. There weren't enough stalkers left over to finish off the medevacs. The phoenix has died a long time ago. Widowmine in the middle of everything. Gonna hit, well, uh, disruptor shot. Settles on the Kala well, settles on the Widowmine. Advanced ballistics on the way is clearly there's not really the economy to go for battle cruisers. Kills a few. What? Ah, the Liberators over here denying the economy. A bit of an unceremonious ending, but it has been a very rough game. Oh, oh my, oh, he just warped in. Probably his only warp-ins there, as he had warped in Stalkers. A very frustrating timing to be warping in Zealots for Creator, as he doesn't really even have the money anymore. But, oh my god. I may go back. I don't know. This was... I love this. This is great games. Hectic, messy. Uh, pretty much every unit used. In fact, was every Protoss unit used? He built Void Ray. Let me... Let me I'm, I'm actually... It's possible he built every Protoss unit. I think he did. Zealots, yes. Stalkers, yes. Sentries... Yeah, oh my god. And that's not even going to be the clickbait from this series. It's clearly going to be the Battlecruisers, but... I see. I seriously think Creator used everything and the kitchen think. Think. Sink. Oh my god. Um, 
Wow. Wow. Well, make sure to check out the Korean StarCraft League. Check the description. If you can, throw them uh, something on Patreon. Encourage more battles like this one. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe. I hope made your day a little bit better. Make sure to check out this video that Jimmy put up for you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck, have fun. Stay chill.